You're going to want to throw the avocado out with this core on this one, but at that I say, please just reference the title of my podcast show. I love a difficult conversation because if it's the last thing I do, I will avenge the kids that Bush failed. Trust me here. The news of One Direction or Liam Payne's passing is in the news by now. You've probably heard that. And it's bringing up a lot of nuanced conversations, to say the least, on the internet. But there's one conversation in particular that I want to examine because I do feel like it overlays with a lot of what I've been talking about in regards to woke culture and the way that it's become a Trojan horse, new rebirth of Christianity. But it's going to take a few steps for us to get there. So just, just trust me on the process here. I'm autistic. I have ADHD. So sometimes the way I connect dots is not always super obvious for other people. Sometimes it is. So all I'm saying is if those connections aren't quite clear just from the introduction, just, just hear me out for a moment, please. And while I'm at it, hi, I'm Katie. I'll be your internet cult leader for the day. I run a podcast called Difficult Conversations where I like to have nuanced conversations in a world that has gone black and white. And in between podcast episodes, I do like to run my mouth trap on YouTube. And so if you like to have conversations about things that people have outlawed as taboo from a philosophical point of view or social politics, feel free to hit like and subscribe. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Diving right in, the tweet in question, and yes, I did say tweet, not X or whatever X post or call. I will never, ever, ever validate any ideal of Elon Musk. The tweet in question says, parasocialism aside, I wouldn't be the person I am today without the community I formed because of One Direction. Like, I'd even a stretch to say that growing up online as their fan radicalized me in my worldview. First statement, as a high schooler that was running through the malls with my friends trying on clothes that I could not afford the summer that you don't even know you're beautiful dropped, I get it. And you're like, hey, get what? Because I haven't explained how people are reacting. But like, let me say this up top first, please. I get what this person is trying to convey as a person that was also young when One Direction first dropped, okay? Not as young as the core audience, which I really do feel was preteen girls, middle school age girls, but I get the defense of this tweet. And then also people just want to ish on anything that girls like. People want to ish on anything that is pop culture and the idea that it could be half substance. People who like freaking love the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> you think the Beatles are <laughs> but as a African American woman who grew up in the deep south I do really understand the reactions like sorry but radicalized <laughs> there are a lot of people outside of the one directional world who have no idea what's going on in the one direction world we'll say that okay a lot of these are genuine questions. And to that, though, members of the community are chiming in. And my favorite is up. Zane was brown, so they had to understand that Islamophobia was wrong. <laughs> and there are people in the comments like, we were young. Don't play it down. How else would we have known not to hate brown people and Muslim people if this one boy couldn't sing and dance a lot? And that, that's where my gears get, get to grinding, right? And then also shout out to the Middle East Muslim community for finally understanding the experiences of black people because man, man, we were been shucking and jiving in the nightclubs for the longest and people were like, you know what? This girl can sing and dance really well. Maybe he does deserve human rights because I'm sorry, I don't care how old you are. That is an insane take. And also that's an insane take for an adult person to still hold. Like, wow, brown boy sure could sing and dance. And you know what? Maybe we should stop kabooming the people in the Middle East. Maybe that is wrong. God, I love music. And every time we talk about these things, they're like, wow, Katie, so you're so radical. Honestly, again, I grew up brown and a woman in the deep South, right? And so it's like... Existing was radical. You know, I'm like walking through Home Depot with my mom and I walk off to check out light bulbs and here's some grown ass man hitting on me because I've already hit puberty. Like, and 
that is wrong, right? I'm like, wow, you know, it's really, really wrong to hit on children. It's really, really wrong to project grown up ideas onto little girls. And so all these things, right, that people are like, well, how do you expect me to know it's wrong? Like brown people and women in the combination of both and queer children, we had to figure this stuff out very early because the world was like hitting our heads up against the wall. And also beyond that, some of us paid attention in school. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hate to say it. Everybody wants to scream intellectualism and intellectual snob. I'm sorry. That's what school was for. You were supposed to go and pay attention. What does that mean? I'll tell you what that means. It's like when we were talking about feminism and I was like, guys, I was very shocked to find out that there were a lot of women that were okay with patriarchal I was very shocked to find out that there were a lot of women okay with patriarchal ideas until it didn't work out in their favor. I thought we all knew that the subjugation of women was wrong from the jump. And they're like, wow, why would you know that if you didn't try and fail? Because I read books. Because when my teacher gave me the scarlet letter and asked me questions like, hey, is it fair that she's being punished for having a baby and the preacher isn't? I thought about it. I didn't just zone out and say it's not that deep and draw circles on my paper, which again, I mean, uh, um, and you could say, oh, well, that's all the things. But baby, I was undiagnosed autistic and ADHD at the time, and I figured out how to pay attention. So we're not going to make this um, a ableist, oh, blah, 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 all the things that you guys like to make it when people make reasonable suggestions about paying attention and thinking oh my God, people will be like, that doesn't make sense. You're not thinking. And someone will yell, that's ableist just because they're dumb, dumb, that does not want to face the fact that they've spent most of their lives being intellectually lazy. And more to the point, when I was 14, maybe even still 13, I was learning about the Armenian Gemini genocide in school we were learning about great atrocities in this world so you're not going to say oh my god we were 14 how were we supposed to know that it was wrong to hate muslim people how were we supposed to know it was wrong to hate brown people before zayn malik it's like i'm glad you figured it out but i mean i'm not gonna necessarily agree we had the same conversation when we were talking about brooke shofil tana mojo and all those people when all those racist tweets came out and they're like, hey, I was just so young. I didn't know any better. I grew up in the Bible Belt. My my Mima was racist. Racism was everywhere. So I just thought it was funny. And on one hand, I deeply agreed with the video that D'Angelo did about this topic where it does make sense. It is kind of valid of an when you explain like, yeah, it was just the culture. I didn't know any better. That is true. You don't know what you don't know. But at the same time, we didn't grow up in an era where we didn't have access to the internet. We did not grow up in an era where we did not have access to books. Okay. Like, I'm sorry. It is a privilege to not perceive that being phobic or istic is wrong. And most of these people, they knew, I don't know, like, I just don't buy it 100%. And maybe it is because I'm projecting and I have a bias because I check so many boxes for things that people hate. <laughs> um, but I guess it's like, if the children who receive the hate for existing within these constructs are mature enough to to process these things, to understand these things, I think you can pay attention in school long enough to value what is being taught to you because most of you did not grow up in the streets. Most of you were not locked in your bedrooms at home and not allowed to have an education. Most of you just didn't care to think critically about the material. All the time, people take ideas that they learn and they forget that they're actually supposed to think about how they apply to the world. Like, People ask me, how did you think of that? I'm like, I read a book and I applied the knowledge. And I don't feel like I'm an a-hole for saying that is actually not rocket science. Every time a video of mine goes super viral and people are like, this is super smart. This is super cool. There's always these, these, these hecklers in the comments that are like, this is such a basic idea. She's not that smart. This is very simple. And honestly, I kind of agree with them. But it's okay if certain things have not slipped into your consciousness. So like I say, I kind of see both sides of it. Like, hey, becoming a one-directioner 
one D fan really radicalized me because nothing in my life was challenging me to think critically about these ideas that I may have encountered in school, but really didn't know how much they mattered because I've never had any exposure to brown people. And I actually thought the brown people jokes were funny, whatever, whatever it is, whatever they sound like, right? On some degree, I, I, I do get it. I do hear you, but I do have very specific thoughts about how you grew up that may have allowed you to think that. I do think you're privileged. Now, I know a lot of people think that the P word is like somebody slapping their mother. And maybe it is, but everybody is a little privileged. I have privileges. I have privileges for being a light-skinned Black woman. I have privileges for, I guess, being considered conventionally attractive by some people. Some people would not agree, but there are some people who would say I'm conventionally attractive and therefore have benefits. And so I understand like, the very complex neuron network of having privileged while still being marginalized and being like, I just genuinely didn't know. I did not have access to the tools, which is why I'm all for giving people tools to understand things. But the other part is that nobody can make you think about this stuff. Like my biggest gripe, I think, is that a lot of you did not not have the tools. A lot of you did not not have the education. You just did not apply yourself, which then we can get into why that exists and what's going on at home and how capitalism is crushing the spines of parents and so they don't care to be really emotionally or intellectually involved with their children here's an ipad shut up i gotta go to bed i'm tired i gotta do a double and it's like not their fault that they're drowning underneath capitalism but also it was their job to really help you develop the way you think i can't think of the word that i, I mean right now so it is all interconnected but also within that is now i know better I'm willing to reframe some things. And then more importantly, I'm willing to challenge myself to think critically going forward, which if I might be frank, is where a lot of you are really missing the bill. And I think that's what really struck me about this because I think the one direction or radical, wow, it's bad to hate brown people, preteens grew up to be this generation of radical leftists that are recreating Christianity because they care more about throwing stones and doing witch hunts than actually protecting people and their rights. And we see a lot of this with the Madeline Pence situation, which I didn't think I was going to go here today, but it's just a natural segue. And I say this as somebody who was a big Madeline Penn fan, not parasocially, but when she first popped up on my TikTok, FYP, I was very excited about her. I was very excited to know she existed, that she did the work she did, that she advocated for the things she advocated for. I was all for it. And, you know, it's a tell as old as time, brown person becomes emotionally attached to non-brown person who seems to really get the equality thing and then brown person is disappointed the moment that the non-brown person communicates that they actually don't care about these ideas beyond what serves them in the way that they would like to think about the world and they never thought about the fact that they have privilege that insulates them from being too political they have privilege that allows them to be single issue voters and i know this is not a video about politics i've already made my video about how crazy it is that a lot of people are taking false narratives to condemn Kamala when there are some very worthwhile things to criticize about her, but like, you don't have to make it up. But also, also maybe what was actually missing from that video was that like, they are not equal. Hello, Trump, what was it, two days ago? Today is uh, October the 19th, maybe? Maybe it's the 18th, I'm sure. I don't have a calendar in front of me, but a day or two ago, he announced that it, he wanted to have the military deport extreme leftists. And you're like, you know what? I think Donald Trump and Kamala Harris are equal. They have equal ideas. You know, here's one guy's like, I'm prepared to let women and brown people and queer people die in the streets and I'm gonna deport anybody who has anything to say about me that I don't like, but they're equal. Extreme leftists are so determined to finger whack America into hell for not showing up the way that they want the world to show up. This isn't extreme enough, so I'm gonna do nothing. Wow, I can't have everything the way I want it immediately. Wow, I'm just gonna opt out and now everybody's in hell, the whole world, just because you wanted to have the, the moral authority to like, ah, 
I couldn't be you losers. We're all the same losers. We've all lost this battle. We're all going to hell together. In the words of Denisha Carter, whether you give your input or not, you will be governed. Whether you cast a vote or not, you will be governed. Abstaining from the vote does not mean you are no longer governed. It does not mean you do not exist under these systems. And it's like, wow, okay, we don't have a revolutionary. Therefore, you're like, well, I guess we'll just have to go to the dark ages. That is bad shit to me. It is. I'm so sorry. It is. It just. But before that explosive rant thing happened to my body, I guess what I was trying to say is that I think it's interesting that this same generation that was like, wow, I didn't know it was bad to hate brown people. And so this brown boy sang songs that I really like grew up to be these people who have a bit of a shallow understanding about what leftist ideas were meant to be. Right. They're like, wow, hmm, I don't care if this election is critical for the safety of women, queer people and brown people. There's one specific issue that I wanted to see. So you all can actually D.I.E. if that's that's crazy. That's not what leftist ideas were meant to be. That's not what liberal ideas were meant to be. That's why I said on some on some level, I am starting to agree with the conservatives because this is not what those movements were about. And I will not identify with these groups anymore because to me again it's like I when I, I left the church I was like I will not identify with Christians anymore because most of this is hate and discrimination I don't know what you might call me but I don't hate people for existing as they are I have no desire to force lifestyles on other people I just want everyone to be, be safe and happy okay I just want everyone to have the right to live the lives that they were granted in this world and it's like this is a mess what you want is witch hunt what you want is to build your self-esteem by making other people feel bad and so it's like you can say it's kind of mean and not thoughtful to laugh at people who say that one direction radicalized them but I do believe that if your worldview was so protected that you never knew that it was bad to hate brown people until there was a brown person that sang a song that you like and people were being mean to that brown person and you're like, hey, don't be mean to that brown person. I like that song. And you probably would not have said anything about people being mean to that brown person if you didn't like that song, but you did. So you're like, wow, I should learn about occupation and what's going on in the Middle East. I do think you grew up to be the person that has such a shallow understanding of what liberal ideas are about, that you can pick and choose what you felt comfortable with. And if people don't agree with you, then you can just get on your little high horse and be like, huh, you're not as radical as me. You're not a revolutionary. Somebody who's never left their fucking bedroom, first off. <laughs> Somebody who never disconnects from the internet router. Somebody who's afraid to say hello to people in public. And if you do say hello to them, they're like, you are being classes by forcing me to perceive you for your entertainment. It's that person. They have no understanding of how to actually apply these ideas that we're trying to drive home. We want you to understand issues of classism. We want you to understand issues of social hierarchies. We, You can't just leverage it when you feel uncomfortable. You can't just leverage it whenever there's an idea you don't agree with. It's like the whole thing, gaslighting. If I, ha if I say, hey, I think this remote is black, and you're like, oh my God, you're gaslighting me. I feel like it's gray. That's insane. That's not, that's not a normal or realistic or good use of therapy tools being given to you to help you protect yourself from abuse. It's like people deserve to have these tools of education to understand how to facilitate a better world, but people are using it for infighting and to be mean and to morally police other people and to be judgmental and it's not great and really I don't know. If I keep going, it's just going to get too ranty, but that's that's what I'm thinking of. I know there's a lot to discuss in reality in regards to the Liam Payne situation. I was not aware of everything that was going on with him. There, I have definitely in the last 24 hours started to see that there was a lot going on with him maybe potentially chatting with minors. There was a video put out by an ex-girlfriend, I believe, where she said she had put out like what a restraining order, protection order of some sort. And 
there is a lot. I friends commenting that they felt like you've been acting erratic at maybe somebody's concert a few weeks ago. I had no idea about that. And I think even if I were to talk about the Liam Payne situation, I would not comment on that because there's there's so much, right? There are some things I, I do feel like in this world that are irredeemable, but I'm very conservative, we'll say, with passing that title out because the whole ideal of being liberal and to put forth new ideas of how to make society better is to rehabilitate. And it's like, what is the difference in between somebody who just genuinely does not care about the harm they cause and somebody who has the potential to be better? I don't know where that line is. I'm not in law as of today. I'm not a judge. Um, and so it's like every time you get into those types of conversations, the leftists, the radicals who are not like their Christian grandparents will be like, well, if you don't think like me or if you ever make a mistake or if you ever do something wrong, you deserve to be outcasted from society forever, banished and hated. And that that's a lot for me. Again, I'm <laughs> as somebody who my origin specifically, witch hunts are not my thing. <laughs> Um, and so I, I wouldn't be talking about that angle. I would maybe use that as an example or as a soapbox to pivot. So we would not be talking about Liam. We would pivot to talk about issues of mental health, addiction, and all of those things. As somebody who has struggled with major depressive disorders for years, at least from a diagnosed point of view since 18, but for years. And one of my greatest fears being like it being too much one day. And so every time we see somebody like Robin Williams or just anything that just, it always brings me back to this place like, oh, this is a real disease that people succumb to, especially if you are on the addiction end of the spectrum. Those are real diseases. And I honestly just hate the way we talk about people with mental illness and the lack of compassion, right? Like we talk about a lot of people will use mental illness and being ableist as an excuse to not be held accountable for messed up things that they are saying or just a lack of thoughtfulness. But when it comes to really observing and having commentary on a person who is actively having a manic crisis, let's say like, um, I can't even think of an example. I mean, but when it comes to somebody having an actual manic crisis, especially when it's a less than perfect victim, which again, being a victim does not mean you're entitled to do whatever you want. It doesn't mean you're entitled to harm people, but these are all nuanced and complex conversations. And so if I were to talk about it, I would talk about it from that angle. But I also, there's so much that's been happening just in the last 24 hours, like TMZ releasing the pictures of the crime scene, that it's like, I don't really like to touch these things because it really does kind of disgust me when people use these moments of other people's demise for like gain. And I think it has to be like, oh wait, we talk about it. Like I took it and I was like, hey, actually this is a great opportunity to talk about the radical history of One Directioners, which maybe that's not as ethical as I think it is, but it's very difficult for me to know where the line is, what is okay to discuss and what's not. But we're gonna leave this here for now. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think that um, it's fair that, well, maybe fair is not the right phrase. So maybe the best I can say, what do, you, what do you think about the One Direction generation being radicalized through One Direction? What do you think about it? Um, I'll see you in the next one, friends.